Hello, this is Talking Europe. Today, my guest is the EU's Internal Markets Commissioner, Thierry Breton, who's the European Commissioner, nominated by the French President, Emmanuel Macron. Now, this internal markets portfolio is a weighty one, covering the functioning of the single market, covering also EU industries, climate commitments, intellectual property rights, even defence and space aspects among many other things. Thierry Breton is part of the vaccine task force as well, involved in raising production of COVID-19 vaccines and getting them out to member states. Thierry Breton, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. I'd like to start with uh, coronavirus and vaccines, if I may. The new variant, the Omicron variant, a cause for concern. Uh, the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control says it seems likely this variant could evade the protection of those EU approved vaccines. Does the European Commission and this agency, ECDC, have the resources and powers to adequately monitor and prevent the spread of this variant? Unfortunately, we will have to cope uh, with new variants. We know this uh, uh, probably uh, again and again till the end of the pandemic. But if I may say so, uh, uh, in order to uh, prevent us against uh, the risk, mm -hmm. we have now everywhere in Europe uh, uh, a very solid uh, sequencing organization. Mm -hmm. So we are now uh, um, in, in the process of sequencing. We will have the final result within the next two to three weeks uh, because nobody knows now if it is uh, worse than the Delta variant or if it is uh, not as strong. Uh, but we will know all this in, in, in two to three weeks. Now mm -hmm. we have only very, very few cases, of course, in Europe. But mid-time, I would like to, t to say again that uh, the, the pandemic we are fighting is uh, the pandemic due to the Delta variant. And this is everywhere. And this is why we need to vaccinate as much as we can. We have all resources available. We have all the vaccines. We are the first continent in terms of uh, produ producing um, mRNA mm -hmm. vaccines. Mm -hmm on the planet. So we have more than enough for our European fellow citizens, but get vaccinated and get uh, also to, uh, um, to obtain your, your, your booster, because we know that this is uh, the solution against uh, uh, the pandemic we are fighting now. Now, regarding the, uh, the, the new variant, uh, uh, um, of course, we will have enough resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now more than 60 factories and the um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies with whom we have contracted uh, will be able to provide us within less than three months a new vaccine if it's necessary. Uh -huh. But uh, nobody knows now if it is necessary. The director general of the World Health Organization, uh, Tedros, uh, pleaded with countries during the World Health Assembly uh, just a few days ago to do their part to tackle vaccine inequality. He said the longer this goes on, this inequality, the more opportunity this virus has to spread and evolve in ways we cannot predict or prevent. Now, the European Commission has donated millions of doses of vaccines to less well-off parts of the world. But there are very loud calls, Commissioner Breton, for a, a temporary lifting of intellectual property rights to enable low-cost vaccine production closer to where the vaccines are needed. Is it time to make this happen? So yeah, there's maybe two parts in your question, if you allow me. The first one is that uh, uh, we need, and that's absolutely mandatory, to make sure that we will be able to deliver as many vaccines as possible uh, everywhere on the planet when mm. it's needed. And of course, uh, I think first uh, on Africa, which is so important, uh, where we know that we need to increase drastically uh, our delivery in, in, in vaccines. We have COVAX, of course, doing it now, but we need to do more. And of course, we encourage uh, 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 strongly every single, not only member states, but every single country on the planet, including our US friends, our British friends, uh, to do it uh, very, very quickly. But there you're still we talking about donations. We are producing, may, let's say. Commissioner Breton, you're still talking about donations. Yeah, I'm talking about donations, but that's because, you know, uh, um, to, to, to build a, a new factory, uh, when you get uh, the license, it takes between two to three years. So the urgent situation is now. Mm -hmm. Now, in between, we Europeans started already uh, to uh, initiate uh, the um, uh, uh, fabrication of three new plants in Africa, mm -hmm. in Senegal, uh, uh, in South Africa, uh, in Ghana, and we will do more. 
because of course we need to uh, um, help uh, Africa to have their own infrastructure. Well, there, there certainly is infrastructure already in some parts of the world. We know that India has great vaccine uh, production capacity. I think an implication of what Tedros was saying is that this isn't even about altruism at this point. There's a clear self-interest for the EU in terms of limiting further mutations, deaths and further economic harm. If I can just put to you what your colleague, uh, the EU trade chief, uh, Valdis Dombrovskis, wrote uh, in the Financial Times last week. He said the EU would favour a targeted waiver on vaccine intellectual property. I just want to clarify with you, does that mean supporting a simplification of the process of compulsory licensing of IP? Or is it what Africa, South Africa and India are asking for, no. which is full-scale lifting of IP? We are really working towards this with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, WTO, and I think it, 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 it's, uh, it is really the place where, where uh, we, we need to discuss it. And we will discuss it, of course, with a, a very open mind. Just a word about uh, post-Brexit relations between the EU, France particularly, and the United Kingdom. Uh, we know that they're in a bit of a bad place uh, on certain aspects, certainly, over people crossing the channel as irregular migrants, for example, uh, these rows over fishing rights. Uh, the French interior minister, Mr. Mr. Darmanin, said Boris Johnson's government is guilty of double talk. Uh, now, this is a relationship that the EU and the EU Commission cannot ignore. Just on a basic point, is the UK government a reliable partner? It's not a surprise to tell you the truth for us. And, uh, but what I could tell you is that it is not, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, a story between uh, UK and France. I know that the British government is willing to have uh, multilateral discussions because they don't want to recognize the EU as a world. Okay, mm -hmm. they left uh, the EU, we regret. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, um, it is not again a, a negotiation between France and, 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 and the UK. It is a negotiation. Uh, maybe Mr. Johnson will not like it, but between. UK and the EU. And we will negotiate between UK and the EU. And we will find a solution because it is in the interest at the end of the day of the UK to make sure that the agreement that they sign will um, uh, be applied. That's it. A French issue now, Commissioner Breton, uh, the French presidency of the EU Council, coming up in January. Just to explain to our viewers, this means France organising and chairing a host of high-level EU meetings and getting a chance to shine a light on its own policy agenda as well. Commissioner Breton, ahead of the presidency, France 24 has commissioned a major survey on how French people see the European Union. Now, overall... Just over half of French people are confident about the future of the EU in a general sense. But more people think that the EU economy will degrade, will get worse, than those who think it will improve. 46% to 33%. Uh, considering where we are with COVID particularly, would you tend to agree with them? So first, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not surprised by the fact that the majority of French people are, are, are definitely in favour of the EU because this is exactly what we see everywhere in Europe. There's a lot of questions and, and, and also uncertainties, including inflation, is, is, is a pretty uh, uh, mm -hmm. important uncertainty, which is, uh, which is uh, something mm -hmm. that we will have to tackle anyway. So overall, uh, uh, I understand the concern, but, uh, but if we look at the figures, GDP growth is, is higher than uh, from far, from mm -hmm. far, that mm -hmm. we expected. And unemployment is at probably at its lowest uh, since uh, years and years in Europe. So things are, are probably uh, better that uh, our fellow citizens, or at least my uh, fellow citizens, uh, could feel, I believe. Another question for you about the recognition of uh, European Union figures and uh, really how much French people are connecting with European news. The most recognised European in the poll is Michel Barnier on 68%. Now, you yourself came second. 50% of French people knew who you were when they, when they were asked. Fewer than half recognised Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, does it concern you that people maybe aren't engaged with Europe? Uh, you said that uh, uh, I'm not yet at the level of uh, 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 my former colleague Michel Barnier, so it gives me some room for improvement. Hopefully next year I will then uh, uh, mm -mm. do uh, better. Uh, but still 50% is probably a recognition. Even if when you are a commissioner, you are not French anymore or German or, or, mm -hmm. or Italian or whatever, you are an European commissioner. But I'm coming from France. Of course, I'm French. 
And uh, that's maybe why uh, I'm a little bit more visible. I don't know. And uh, we just, in the last couple of days, had the far-right commentator, uh, Eric Zemmour, uh, declaring he will run for French president next year. He's not a fan of the European Union. He said he wants to take back power from technocrats. Uh, do you believe this kind of talk could win votes? No, but, uh, <clears throat> I, I, you know, uh, we have... Um, uh, we are uh, in Europe, uh, some uh, extremes uh, on the right side and on the left side, and they say basically the same thing uh, uh, regarding uh, the EU. Uh, so it's not a surprise. Uh, this is their, uh, let's say, motto. Uh, but uh, of course, personally, I respect everyone. Uh, it, is, it is normal. I could tell you that, of course, this feeling is, uh, is, is uh, absolutely not uh, the majority in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and by the way, regarding the previous questions, uh, there is less and less people uh, being, I believe, uh, uh, really uh, anti-European. Now, of course, could we do better? Yes. Uh, less technocratic? Of course. Uh, being closer to the people? Of course. More solidarity? Yes. So we can improve, but, you know, uh, we have a project. Mm -hmm. And our project is based on uh, the rule of law, a shared value, uh, we are a continent, 446 million inhabitants, and I think we could be proud and, um, and, 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 and also happy to belong to this community. When I look at what happened with our neighbours, and our big mm -hmm. neighbours, this is UK, mm -hmm. personally I think it's better to be part of this project, and we have also our big neighbours on the east side, on, on, on the south mm -hmm. side, so, yes. We are fortunate to be uh, European city, citizens uh, belonging to this project, being part of this project, it gives us uh, some rights, but also, I believe, some duties. Commissioner Breton, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for being with us on Talking Europe. And thank you for being with us uh, for this edition of the programme. Do stay tuned. Plenty more coming up very soon.